Hi there. Today we're going to do a walkthrough of installing Deep Freeze Mac and stepping you through the various features of the product so that you know what to expect when you're doing a deployment. Um, Deep Freeze Mac is a reboot to restore application used to reset machines in public access, hospitality, any number of places. Um, most of you are probably familiar with it already since you picked up this video to watch. Um, so when we install, the first thing we should usually do on a Mac, just to be 100% sure, is check to see if there's a core storage volume on the device. We do that by running the command disk util space cs space list. And if we get the response, no core storage uh, logical volume group found, that means that we're probably in the clear to move forward. Um, core storage was a uh, storage technology that Apple rolled into the operating system a few revisions back. And while it did allow them to do a lot of neat things around the fusion drives and stuff, it's not something that we can support with running Deep Freeze Mac on. So as long as you get the response, no core storage, logical volumes found, we're good to go. So I've already downloaded Deep Freeze Mac. And we open this up. You'll see there's two versions that you've got. You've got one for Mac OS Mavericks to High Sierra, and then one from Lion to Mountain Lion. Just pick the appropriate one for your operating system and run the Deep Freeze installer. And what this is going to do is it's going to pop open and give us a couple of options. The first option is what we use to install Deep Freeze locally on the computer. This is how you'd set up a standalone machine. The second one is to create an installation package. And this is what you would do is if you're going to use a third party application or management tool to push Deep Freeze out to all of your machines on maps. This allows you to pre-configure things like passwords, maintenance schedules, user mapping, stuff of that nature so that you don't have to go and configure each individual machine one at a time. Or we can install the Deep Freeze remote tasks for ARD. So Deep Freeze Mac is a little different in deep than Deep Freeze Enterprise in that it doesn't have its own enterprise console. What we've done is we've actually given you the ability to integrate with Apple Remote Desktop. And with this install option, we install a series of tasks into the Apple Remote Desktop console just to make life easier for you so you don't have to type in all the Unix commands manually. Uh, these are documented in our user guide, so if you wanted to, you can use them as a reference to integrate with other third-party products for management, or um, you know, if you want to run shell scripts or something that incorporated changes to our product. So we're just going to do a local installer upgrade. Click continue. And the package is going to do a couple things to make sure that it's able to run. We're just going to hit continue and go through the options. And the one thing of note is you will want to secure your machines using an open firmware password. Um, if you're doing this at home and you're more worried about just reverting accidental changes, not a huge issue. But if you're dealing with a public access computer, this will prevent people from booting off additional disks, changing system settings in the, in the NVRAM and doing other things that, you know, because it's not disk related, we can't protect against. So we strongly recommend that you do set this once you've got the, um, the, the firmware password set on the Mac. We're going to hit continue here, accept the license agreement. Now I'm just going to install as a demo. Now if you do this as a demo, you get a full 30 day trial that you can play with and get a feel for the product. If you enter your license key in here, it'll pick up the key and be good to go. Um, you can get your license key along with your download from Pharonix Labs or Pharonix Customer Center if you're an international customer. We're going to select install and authenticate. and continue our installation. This won't take too long. It's just gonna go through and set up a few odds and ends and get the system ready to go. In the meantime, we'll just close these windows here and give it some time to reboot. Now, once the system has rebooted and comes back up, what we're gonna see is up in the, um, up in the menu bar at the top, you will see a little bear icon, a little shield with the, the bear on it. And that's how you'll access the product to be able to make changes to the system to alter the configuration and do all that type of stuff. From the boot control window, we can configure things like Apple software updates. We can configure the mapping of users to thawed spaces on the system. We can create thawed spaces on the system. Um, enter our license key, uh, create maintenance schedules, all that type of stuff. Um, there we go finished and now we're going to give the computer a restart. Now this will take a again just a moment to reboot the computer. This isn't the, the fastest one I have in the in the lab at the moment. 
Um, so while we're waiting for it to reboot, we did want to touch on uh, the cloud side of Deep Freeze and how the Mac version can tie into that. We do give you the ability uh, with the Deep Freeze cloud to take an existing Mac OS device and tie it into our cloud management platform so that you can control it and report on it and have management of it from out in the world at large. Um, that's an optional component that is licensed separately from the product itself. And if you're interested in that, we can definitely uh, get you connected with someone on our, uh, our team to give you a demo of that and get you some details as to what that looks like. We'll probably throw a video of, up, of it up in a little bit as well. And machine's still rebooting here. It may just take a moment. And there we go. Um, if you're running High Sierra, you should be aware that in, with High Sierra, any new Apple machines are shipping with the APF, APFS file system enabled. Um, so you may need to take some additional steps to change the configuration of the system to allow you to properly boot that operating system with our software installed. Um, we'll, we'll have a separate video on that that'll go through the process of getting that set up and converted over. And you can have a look at that. Uh, we'll probably put a description in the link below or have a look at our YouTube channel and that'll give you a quick link to that. So now that we've logged in, the system's booting up and in a few moments you'll see in the top of the menu bar here, the deep freeze icon will pop up and we'll be then be able to get into the controls to alter system settings, change options and all that. Now the first time you log in, it is gonna prompt you to set up a username and password. In this case, we're gonna keep it simple. And now we've got the ability to go in here and control and configure Deep Freeze Mac. So we can set the state, boot it frozen or thawed, whether we hide the frozen icon in the taskbar or show it, whether we hide the thawed icon. Um, by default, we do badge any partitions on the system to show that they are frozen. So if we go into the finder and we go to the actual um, actual drive itself, we'll, we'll actually see the deep freeze icon shown on it, indicating that it's frozen right here. Um, and if the drive isn't protected, so you have two, say you had two partitions, you would see that it isn't badged in this manner. Um, we can select which drives we want to thaw or freeze in here. So if you wanted to have multiple partitions where you have um, you know, user data stored on one app, stored on another, you can change that here. If you don't want to repartition, we can create thaw spaces in here. The thaw space is a virtual volume that you can use to store data in. Um, you can only create these when you're in a thawed state. That's why these options are disabled right now. The maintenance section here allows us to create scheduled tasks to do things like running Apple software updates, or alternatively, you can run a script um, on the client machine to run third party updates. So if you wanted to integrate with something like um, Get Mac Apps, you could uh, create a shell script and then throw that in there to run those updates at the time that you designate in here. And you can select the script. Oh, okay. So when we do this, you'll see they show up in the schedule here, and it shows you a summary of what's going on with the task and when it's going to run. And you can edit these later on if you wanted to. The mapping section, this allows us to move user accounts on the system into other areas. So if I had a second user account, I could actually set it up to map that automatically into a thawed partition on the system so that I didn't have to go through and move everything manually. And then we've got our user section here. And in the event we do need to uninstall, we can just do the uninstall in here once Deep Freeze is turned off. Anyhow, that's a walkthrough for setting up Deep Freeze Mac and a quick overview of the features of it. If you've got any questions, feel free to reach out to our support team. We're more than happy to answer any questions or concerns that you have. Um, yeah, if you hopefully you found this um, instructive, and again, any questions, just reach out and let us know. Have yourself a good evening, and thanks for watching.